lahat. Welcome to the Filipino Basketball Show. Pinoy crossover, guys. It's your boy Mark and Mark, the host for tonight. And here we at JR on my left side, feeling good, like in the purple. And guys, Burgundy. Burgundy, oh sorry. <laughs> but the more important one is what I'm wearing because we're going to talk about it all night tonight. I'm ready for this. But we have our special guest for tonight. Introduce yourself. Thank you for having me, first of all. I'm uh, Justin Yee. You might see me on Instagram at JB Yeezy. You might have seen me on ATB News and more recently on the Sixth Man Podcast. And uh, yeah, thank you for having me again. Awesome, man. Thank this guy here, knows bas This guy knows sports, yeah. basketball. That's why we have him here tonight to talk about a lot of things, a lot of topics. So we're going to go straight up to it, JR. What do you want to talk first? So right now, the Raptors, right now they don't have a coach yet. Uh, it's Not been a few weeks lately uh, <sighs> since the firing of Dwayne Casey. And I know we've talked about it, about who should be um, coaching uh, the organization, the team. But should we, we, should we be worried about it? Because there's a lot of signings here and there. Milwaukee just got Mike Boldenholzer and... Um, I know Stan Van Gundy got hired probably, I think. I'm not too sure. And there's also rumors about Dwayne Casey being hired um, or having an interview with, with Detroit Pistons. So are, are any of you guys worried about so far the past few weeks that we don't have a coaching job, uh, coaching a coach yet for the Toronto Raptors? Honestly, not at all. So when it comes to coaching, it's not necessarily about what the person has accomplished. It's about the fit and how they will fit into the system. So with the Raptors, for example, they're facing a lot of questions heading into the offseason. Will they go the young rebuilding route? Will they try and get a star to try and go for the Eastern Conference title slash championship again? And with that will come, that'll determine who the next coach will be. Do you want to bring in a guy who knows the young personnel, like a Jerry Stackhouse or a nurse? Or do you want to bring in a proven veteran coach who knows how to coach multiple all-stars on one team? So again, I think I'm not worried at all. Mm -hmm. It really depends on what Masai's vision of the future will be. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're watching. Um, my, my take is... Uh, any of their moves right now is depending on what LeBron will do after this season. For sure. And I think they're watching in terms of what LeBron is going to do. Is he going to stay? Is he going to go to a Western Conference team? Is he going to go to Philadelphia? Is he going to go to another team other than uh, Cleveland? Because the way they're going to go about it depends on whether he's out of, out of the East. Because if, the, he's, if he, uh, LeBron decides to go to the, to the West, maybe play for San Antonio or Houston or Lakers, I think it's. Uh, I think you, uh, Raptors is going to go for it. It's still going to try to uh, go for the championship for the finals because LeBron is not there anymore. That kind of has that mental hurdle for uh, uh, Lowry and, and DeRozan. But if I think LeBron stays, uh, they, I think they'll start rethinking in terms of how they're going to uh, if they're going to go rebuilding mode because I don't think they can go to the finals if LeBron is in the East. It's not just LeBron too. You have yeah. to worry about. You have the Celtics, that young core on the rise that shocked everybody. And they're going to have their two best players back. And for all you know, don't be surprised if they get a third one. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Sixers. You've got to trust the process. They're only going to get better, that mm -hmm. young core. So the East is, is on the rise. And the it's Raptors true. have to decide what direction they want to go in. For sure. True. Yeah. And, um, you know, Brett Brown just got his extension with the Philadelphia 76ers, which is a congrats to him. Um, with, the, with the Toronto Raptors, I feel like, in my opinion, I still think Becky Hammond would be a good choice. He was, I mean, she was a perfect that team, new, yeah. it's, it's that new voice that Masai was talking about. So what, what do you guys think? Who, who, I know we've talked about it in our past mm -hmm. episodes, but uh, Justin, how, what do you think who should be our next coach for the Toronto Raptors? I don't see Masai making any major changes, and that's why I think he should stick internally. You have Jerry Stackhouse, the obvious internal candidate who mm -hmm. knows the young personnel very well, has a great relationship with all of them. Mm -hmm. And that's what, honestly, I think that's what Toronto fans want to see. Um, when uh, the 905 won the championship, they were saying Stackhouse could be the next head coach yeah. if KC does not live up to expectations. Mm. So let's see if it happens. Yeah. In my view, actually, is to get outside, just to get a different view because of the fact that they've been at it for how many, four or five years in a row, making into the playoffs. And it's always the same result in terms of what happens in, in, in their sort of performance, in terms of what they get from Lowry and DeRozan. So I feel like if they get something uh, fresh and new, which is a different coach outside coming in and putting in a different mindset, putting a different culture and perspective, I feel like maybe something could, you know, something could change because I, hey, the, the definition of insanity, if we keep doing the same thing and expecting <laughs> the same results, it, it's crazy. So yeah. I feel like, hey, get something new, get a different perspective, see what happens. And, and if there's nothing more than that, then I feel like it's maybe we're building time for the wraps. So. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. And... 
the building time we'll have to wait for C. But uh, mm -hmm. I know a week ago, all-team all, team, all team NBAs have been announced, and DeMar DeRozan was included in one of those teams. He's a named second all-NBA team. So this being uh, so many years that he's been named, and this one being his best season so far, do you guys think is an argument saying that DeMar has, is the greatest Raptor of all time? This comes down to DeRozan versus Vince Carter. Yeah. I don't want to hear anyone saying Bosch, <laughs> and I'm going to laugh if people say stuff like Andrea Bargnani, okay? Oh, <laughs> so it is DeRozan versus Vince Carter. So let's talk first about Vince Carter. Extremely talented individual and player, right? He Still playing, yeah. oldest player in the league, and he is, who, he is the one who put the Toronto Raptors on the map. Yeah. Now, here was my concern with Vince Carter. He was very talented. Did he have heart? To the max. Did he have the Mamba mentality or the LeBron determination? Mm -hmm. No. And many basketball analysts will tell you, Vince Carter could have been one of the best players in the league in terms of taking it to a championship level, but he didn't have that heart. And mm -hmm. if, he had, if he was loyal and he put in the work, then I would easily say that's not even a debate. He is the greatest Raptor of all time. Mm -hmm. So let's talk now about DeRozan, a man who probably isn't as talented as Vince Carter, specifically when it comes to three-point shooting and consistency in the yeah. playoffs and the yeah. clutch gene, yeah. What does he have, though? He has the loyalty. He's won five straight seasons. How many times did Vince Carter make the playoffs as a Raptor? Twice? Twice, yeah. yeah. And he's improved every season. His, you can look at the points going up. He's, break, he's broken the uh, scoring record in one game. He's broken the all-time scoring record. And I, see, I only see him getting better because he's willing to put in that work every offseason. I never saw that with Vince Carter. Mm -hmm. So to answer the question, I think he has solidified himself as the greatest Raptor in franchise history. Most talented? No. Yeah. I agree as well. Uh, the, 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 I think we have this as, you know, I, was in, I, I, was, I came from the Philippines, so when I came here, it was a little bit closer to the end of the Vince Carter era. But I think we all have a lot of people here in Toronto and Canada in general have this stigma in terms of what Vince Carter has done for uh, the Raptors franchise in terms of because he had he had the flash, you know, he had the 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 fanciness, the, the athleticism, you know, he had all this glamour in him that made him such an icon in Toronto. They named him Air Canada. I mean, our airport was named after him. So the fact that we have this, like, it's kind of the same as what we have with Michael Jordan in terms of how good he was back in the day and this argument with LeBron, who's the GOAT, really. We have the stigma with Jordan. I think we have this too in Canada in terms of, how, uh, of Vince Carter. But if you look at his, you know, his results, the, the performances, the fact that he, he barely had any success with the Raptors, really, besides the fancy dunks and the cre like, you know, jumping over everybody. Whereas the Rosen has just been... Uh, he won't give you the flash. He'll give you the mid-range. <laughs> I mean, that's something that everyone thought was a boring game. So he was, but he was consistent and consistently improving every single year. Mm -hmm. And and what he's done the past five years for the Raptors, I think it just shows to to the Raptor fans in general. Um, we changed that culture from being a joke in the NBA, the only team that you know they call us Barneys and they call us this all. They call <laughs> us a yeah, team that just the, Raptors, you know, the yeah, only team, the team. Great White, no nobody. And he put us on the map. Drake kind of helped it too, but he gave us a winning culture. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of what has happened in the Raptors now, no matter what happened in the postseason recently, yep. has a lot to do with, with him deciding to stay, him saying that he's loyal to his team and he's going to stay. He wants to be a Raptor forever. Sure. Yeah. I mean, the loyalty, the loyalty factor and then, again, to what he has done in the past few years, growing his game himself and being that guy to represent I am Toronto, basically, which, you know, uh, results in him being, I think, one of the greatest Raptors of all time as well. I agree. It's, it's great that we all agree, right? <laughs>